exterminating one another. We must stop all of this madness because at the end of the day, we, we have only ourselves to blame. We must uh, have a do or die attitude as we were as street warriors to rebuild our culture and to create a new lasting legacy, a legacy of peace. The music you want, the information you need. Yes, London, we're here, we're here, we're here again. You know, we do it each and every Sunday from 10 until midday. Um, it's the Breaking the Spell show. Well, I want the brother them turn on the advert on time next week, you know, because <laughs> this late advert thing is eating in our, into our time. That's all I'm say about that. Anyway, yes, we want to big up the um, brother Luke and company beforehand, you know what I mean? You know, I know that um, all the listeners, you must have enjoyed that show. You know, I want to big up all the other presenters on Omega FM. How are you doing? You know, I want to big up all the listeners of the shows on Omega FM. You know, and if you're a first time listening to, to the Breaking the Spell show, what are we about? We bring you the facts and only the facts. We don't um, assume any opinions on the show. We just present information as it is. And what we do and strongly ask for you not to do is not to believe us, but to go and check it out yourself. You know, it's a breath of fresh air when you hear how much people in the, that are now researching, you know, that used to just stick to one point. Yep. You know, um, a, a perfect example, you know, coming in listening to Brother Luke's show, one of the things I heard him says is that we all must do our own personal research, which is, which is one of the best recommendations anyone can give. You know, we, we, we as, a, 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 as a people, we need to stop sitting down and relying on other people. You know, one of the things I want to say... Um, we w I want to thank all the people that supported the movement to bring that other event, that wrong event, to its knees. You know, we want to thank all the people that realized what was going on. This is why I'm saying it's so important to research. If you're getting involved in something, check it out. You know, who's behind it? What is it about? How does it benefit the community? Because we all should be doing things now that benefit the community, especially when it's around the period they call Black History Month, when it's meant everything is meant to be oh so much more community orientated and focused. Even though that should be every day, we know it's not. <laughs> you know, so we have to work with what we got until we can make it every day. And you know, a lot of people pulled out of that wrong event. You know, and a lot of not realizing what was said, because a lot of people may, may have not believed us last week when we said this. There's an event that's been put on by others, but that was being put on by Europeans for Black History Month, and it was being done for sole profit. You know, a lot of people heard it, but they may have not believed. And now a lot of people that were on the bill, you know, got wind of what was being said, you know, not because of the show, but because of others working you know, hard just to highlight this factor. And when they realized a lot of people pulled out, you know, a lot of people pulled out. And it is, it is a, a beautiful thing to see that our own, as, as, as a people, we can come together at crucial points. You know, that is a very important thing. Some people stayed in, you know, they stayed in for their own reasoning. You know, that's down to them. We're not going to, like I said last week, we're not going to call any names and cause anyone to be torn down that looks like us because when we need them they're going to be torn down you know we, we we leave people where they are we just work around situations you know so we want to thank everyone also that called in on last week's show highlighting that issue and you know they, they say that it's a two-day event you know i know yesterday wasn't that great and i hope today doesn't go great either for them you know I, I don't care. I'm saying it. You know, I hope it flop. Uh, and if you know people that are planning to attend, we're not, you notice we're not even saying what the event is. And if you know what the event is and you know people that's planning to attend, let them know that this event is straight for profit, not for no other reason but profit. You know, so one of the things, and it's not going back to anyone in the community. You know, w there's no way... Any of us could go out there and plan, um, and, and plan a St. George's Day event, a big massive event, and, 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 and they would it would be tolerated. You know, there's no way we could go out there and plan um, give, uh, 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 a, a Yannicka day, and it'll be, it'll be, there's no way, you know, we couldn't do none of them things. And it, uh, St. Patrick's Day, we couldn't do them things. Worse, we could do it, 
But when they find out, I guarantee you'd be the, you'd be the only one day in your green cap. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? You could do it. But if they found out, you'd be there staggering down the street by yourself. <laughs> so let's do the same. You know, we have to come together when we need to come together. We ain't always going to agree that we know. But we can agree to disagree and come together at certain points. You know, and this is one of the things that we need to do more often and in more constructive and positive ways. And in one way you can do that, and this is not a plug, but it is a plug. <laughs> in one way you can do that is supporting our event. When I said our, I mean the community's event. It's been done by the community, for the community, and proceeds going back into the community. You know, that, and, and, and so I, I say it's ours because it's everyone that belongs to the community, or if you look like me or even if you don't look like me you can come and support the community because you know there, it's a point of us grow, growing as part of the community right you know what i mean you, you don't have to feel say ah oh, i'm not black so i can't go nah foolishness you know one of the one of the gripes with the event that we we we, we said people need to check out to find out what's going on it's not because they were simply just others putting on a black history month event it's simply just the cheek of it putting on a black history event straight for straight profit nothing going back to the community that was a that was a cheek and an insult in its, in, the, in in its own right but the event that we w are strongly asking people to support for this reason because it is put on by you know people of the community and proceeds are going back to the community is culture fest uk if you don't know about culture fest uk it's on next saturday um the 8th of october and it's not a party, you know, it's not going to be a party like how this other event was just built to be a party and then they call it Black History. No, that's the last part. You know, call it a Black History event. I don't see the party in that. This is a, a, a the Culture Fest um, as built by the organizers and it's, organ it's been organized by the Netero Limited. Um, Empower You. Empower You is a charitable organization. Netero Limited, they deal with black bookshops. For people that don't know, and when you hear the name, you might say, "Well, that's a, it's a limited it's a business." They deal with black bookshops, keeping them open. You know, that's their focus: keeping black bookshops open and a point of focus where people can go and do their research in terms of w pushing key books by others, and also that are, are detrimental to our story. You know, so that's what the Netero Limited is about. Empower You is a charitable organization. You know, a charitable organization is not for profit, as they say. Isn't it? It's it's something that has to be all the proceeds that are turned over has to go back into the community. So that's what Empower You is about. Yeah, if you never heard of them, it's a charitable organization, and it's been been done in conjunction with the Netero Limited and African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. You know, proceeds will be going to um, ACLT. If you don't know what ACLT is about, you need to check out their website, African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. You know, this is a website, you go on there, it's the one by Beverly DeGale, you know, you'll find out much more about that. Their website speaks for themselves, they, it will do more justice than me telling you what it's about. Alright, so go check it out, I think it's www.aclt.org, you know, so check that out, you'll see what they're about. And this, this week, I know this week coming up is a week that ACLT is doing a lot of work in terms of bringing the focus to um, bone um, blood donation, bone marrow donation within the, 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 the black community or urban community or whatever you want to call it because, you know, with um, leukemia, there's a shortage of um, blood donors, uh, bone marrow donors in, within the community to uh, help those who are suffering um, simply because we don't like giving blood. We don't. Well, as a community, we don't. You know, and as a result, um, we, um, anyone that suffers from those conditions where they need blood from members of the community, they tend to suffer. You know, so um, that's something that you need, um, we all need to be aware of. So check out their website anyway. It's a big push this week, and um, 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 which culminates into the um, um, Culture Fest coming this Saturday. Yeah, so check that out. But Culture Fest itself, you know, one the focus as on the flyer and speaking to the organizers is about um, health and nutrition and black history. Health and nutrition, the focus there is because, um, as they say, you have to clean up the mind and the body so that you can move forward. If you're too stressed out because you have some problem, you know, y y your focus ain't going to be on coming together as a community or, or as a group or an entity, you know. So 
one of the things there is the health health care and nutrition you know what they what they will say alternative therapy it's not just simply alternative it is things that you can do to help and your, yourself in the process and as they say prevention is better than cure there's way, there's things that you can do to pr prevent problems whether you whether you want to believe it or not there's things that you can do because most problems are caused by the types of food you eat if if it's not all problems you know food this thing that they call food you know um what type of food you're eating where do you eat do you eat at certain restaurants you know because a lot of these fast food chains a lot of these restaurants there's an agenda behind them don't believe me check it out you don't believe me check it out they have an agenda those when i said the restaurants have an agenda i mean those that own the restaurant check out who owns these mega chains you know a lot of them have an agenda and the agenda the, the owner's agenda then will manifest in the food you're getting so what are their what is their agenda you know because if you're eating something and there's an agenda behind it what's going to happen when you eat it you know these are things that you shouldn't eat nowhere without knowing who owns that place and how their views are in life trust me you know so that's something you need to focus on so there's a health and nutritional fear on the day and um, I know there's a series of lectures by prominent speakers um, Robin Walker um, Andrew Mohammed um, there, there's, there's so much people on the, the bill Ron Schillingford there's so much people on the bill that's not on the, the, the flyer, believe me. You know, there's going to be some entertainment there and a lot of children's activities, educational and play. Because, you know, children need to play as well, right? There's, um, who's doing some of the children's activities? Well, we have um, one of London leading preschool managers coming down there to do a free, free set of semin seminar to help you to help your child learn in school which is very important for children today to improve their for children because a lot of children come to school and their parents aren't helping them the right way mm -hmm. to their school. And she's doing a free two seminars next week, mm -hmm. every day, to help give you tips of what to do for your child when they come to school to help them learn. Okay. There will be some free booklets and also of worksheets and stuff that we're doing that day as well. Okay. So there, there, there's things that are going on. Mm -hmm. So be there, be there for your children because it, it's, it's a full day for everyone. No, there's, there's, yeah, there's a complete full day and there's indoor and outdoor, outdoor activity, a, activities. We have so for the kids to be there. So it's fun and it's also educational. Don't if, forget that. If you see, if you see rain, don't think you can't come because <laughs> it's, there's, it's all been planned for because as the organizers put it to me, you know, October <laughs> is a month that can, can go either or either. You know, so they, they, it's well planned for, you know. So that Culture Fest UK, put that in your diary. There's a lot going on, a lot. You know, there's, um, I know Booker T. Coleman is going to be via live satellite link up on the day from the stage doing a lecture. Um, and, you know, if, he's, if you haven't heard his interview, you need to go back, get a copy of his interview from the bookshop because we interviewed him a few, a, a while back. And I know he's been added to the bill by the organizers. Um, to do a, a live satellite link up lecture. Um, likewise, I know there's a lecture on um, tone, sounds, DNA molecules, um, vibrational frequencies. And that in itself, I know, knowing a little bit about that, I know that's going to be quite a thrilling and, and interesting lecture in itself. There's going to be fashion shows, book fairs. So for all those hard to get books that you've been trying to get for a long time, you know, they'll be there. They'll be there. Um, there's going to be healthy cuisine on sale, um, live music. African dances and much more. So that's Saturday, the 8th of October, down there in, in Oakington Manor Primary School, Wembley, Oakington Manor Halls, because you know they got two massive, the, the school does functions, you know, so they got two massive halls down there. And it's from 12 midday until 10 p.m., you know, and it's, uh, it, it, it's the closest tube station if you're traveling from far is um, Stonebridge Park. There's, there'll be a shuttle bus service from Stonebridge Park to the, to the event for those who may not be able to walk for, for, for a distance if you're not driving. And there's free parking all day at the event for, for those people driving in from far. Yeah, there's parking for at least over 400 people where they could hold their you know, uh, car park. Yeah, and there's no, there's no event on in Wembley that day, so even if... The, yeah? There's an event now added? Yeah, um, it was that... Um, 
No, 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 no. no there's no event in Wembley okay. that, that day. There, there's, there's no. Wem I'm talking about Wembley Stadium. Wembley oh, there's no, yeah, no, there's, there's no major event, event on that day. Yeah, there's no event on that day. So there's there's parking in and around if the, that car park gets full. But there's that, that car park can hold so much cars. I'll surprise if it gets full. But if it does, well, there's like the, to see it full. We would love. <laughs> you know, come down and and, and yeah. support the thing. Cause we'll be there volunteering our time uh, on the day because we've been volunteering our time for the um to to the organizers for the event. And this is why we kind of talk about it like we're part of it because of all the work that we've helped them do, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, uh, like I said to people, if, if, you, if, you, if you distrust an organization or you're thinking that there's an ulterior motive, the best way to do it, if you don't want to give finances, is give your time. Because then things become transparent when you're there with them, taking part and helping to plan things and moving forward. Mm -hmm. You know, so Culture Fest UK, you know what I mean? I'm not going to stop pushing it because it's quite important that we, su we support it. Yeah, that's definitely. Um, this is us doing us for us. That's right. So we know so this is Saturday coming up, the 8th of October, Culture Fest UK. We're going to make it the best that we can. Mm. And that's going to be on the behalf of each and every one of us. And if you know anyone that's going to a Black History event today, today, the last of the two days, tell them don't go. Because that is not by us. And not for us. Not for us. And does not benefit us not in no shape whatsoever. Yeah, it's just all about the. What do you call it? The Benjamins or the Queen's Head? Um, the Queen's Head. Queen's Head. For the organizers. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's a bit weak name there. Crying and a bit shameful in the sense that how oh, it has been um, prepared and all of the things that go with it is not too wonderful to say you have. Um, we're going to use it in a layman terms. You have people who are still want to short change with. In a every angle we turn, there's somebody there for put them on in the candy jar and say, yeah, I'll have a cookie. <laughs> and it not really belong to them. But anyway, we'll move on. There was a few things that has been said this morning. Um, you know our little brothers did. Oh, bro uh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's not so much Brother Luke, you know, or, nor Anthony. No. It, it's, it's them guests that every time we come into the studio, he wants to take us on. Yeah, he want to attack us. I, um, I have no idea what's going on with that. Move like him have um, a thing where we call him Zachley, yeah. Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea what's going on, you know. I mean, I, 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 I thought he was just doing his show, but he, he said he done this, the, the three-hour show was dedicated to us to show that we are wrong in what we are saying in that you can use the scriptures and prove all these things. But, I mean, for any of our listeners that's been listening, you know that we've used the Bible in the past, and we've shown you where the whole bloodline, that holy seed, you know, from that Genesis 3.15, that enmity between that woman's seed and that serpent seed, we've shown you how that seed was a Nubian seed all the way down to the birth of the Jesus of the Bible. Yeah. So we have never said that there were Negroes in the Bible. Yep, even <laughs> he mentioned Paul, and when you go back to Paul and look at Paul, Paul was one of those characters who was, um, his mom was an Hebrew. That's and right. His dad was a Roman. That's right. And it's there in the Bible to show what he was. He even bought his citizenship to go into Rome. That's right. You have to study Paul very closely and see the works that Paul done. But anyway, that's not my um, problem. Um, each and everybody entitled to, to do what to, they to, want exactly. to do, and we don't have a problem with that. But sometimes the problem lies when they want to endorse where we don't class as an alien um, force mm -hmm. from your own kind, mm -hmm. because that not help to break the spell, that help to put en them... Enforce through. it, that's yeah, right. enforce the sleep. Mm -hmm. So in a, that sense, he was saying something that um, pertaining to that, say, um, that we... Is the one who this one and the other, uh, we is that, but then yet still him not look for himself in a theme and, and she said, him are the one who are help to enforce the same spell for the people. Them, even when them come across the young children, them with the innocent mind, them want to poison it before it reach anywhere for That's right. itself. That's right. You know what we say, we, we look at the practicality of things and the facts. We say, in this world, the most money, the most investments are spent. Inter is on pushing religious indoctrination onto the children or even the principles of Wicca. Mm -hmm. You know, we know Hollywood is Wicca, 
because it's that magic wand that you see Tinkerbell flying around with and touching in the Disney section, that magic, that Disney cinema magic or those magical illusional spells, you yeah. know, which they give you on the Tell Lies by Vision, right? Or they give you in the cinema, which means movies, by the way, for those yeah. who don't know. Yeah. Now, these, these, these things, we say if so much money is spent on giving you something, buy something that is good for you. It's, it's a simple question. You know, rather, rather than actually start going back into the book, which we've done and we've dissected and we've shown you where they're taking things from, we've shown you how the New Testament is a regurgitation of the Old Testament, we've shown you how, like one, of the, one example of that is the birth of Samson and the birth of Jesus, they will say, oh, it's a prophecy. I said, how can something be a prophecy when it was practical to that time for Samson? It was practical in the sense that that's what happened with Samson. Yeah. So how can it be a prophecy? Yeah. It happened with Samson. It wasn't said this will happen. It happened with Samson. And then the same exact thing is repeated again. Psalms 22, the crucifixion of David. So, um, um, Matthew 27, the crucifixion of Jesus. Yes. We can go on all day showing these simple points. But how does it benefit you in terms of the greater understanding? We've moved past that. We've shown over the past two, three, going now three years, that that there's a story in there that ties it up to that holy seed, you know, when the tribe of Dan and the tribe of Judah, Judah meaning the guide, came together, mm -hmm. and it was that tribe that survived. Yeah. Yeah? And they moved down south, you know, and uh, where are uh, uh, all these places were set up. And we can show you where these names that they give these regions in Africa and around the, the al Aqsarif, mm -hmm. right? Is it al Aqsarif? Did I get right, that right? The middle, the middle passage, um, which they call Ashurka the middle. Uh, uh, that, thank you. Yeah, why do I keep calling? It, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> man, I, mean, I know. That's where I go sometimes. Yeah, the middle uh, part. Uh, say it again. Ashuraka al Alsa. Uh, Ashuraka al Alsa. Yeah, make sure I say it good. So, so the middle passage, right? Where how all those names came about, taking it from those biblical places. But what, yet, when we go back on the old maps, this is all you have to do. Check the old maps out. You will see these names. Of certain places did not exist. There wasn't. These names got these places got called these names over time to tie into this book that was in fr that's in front of you to validate it. Don't believe me? Check it out. Just check out Israel. There was no place called Israel <laughs> till 1948. Yep. And as a matter of fact, they were going to place it Israel in Africa. They was going to put it in um, Angola, and, and then Angola. they decided say, okay, we can't put it in Africa. They Go check it out. It down more. In a, still in Africa, but down more to the next region. Exactly, because they, they're trying to tie up to what these religious scriptures are saying, so it validates these lies. This is all we're saying. Go check it out. This is where they were going to put it, in Angola. Mm -hmm. So Israel, nearly, would, 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 what would have happened if they put it in Angola? You would have all these Africans now are in and around Angola fighting Israel, like all the Palestinians are now fighting Israel, <laughs> because of they're taking the best piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So all we're saying is that go and look at the world. Go, go back into your history. Go back into your story. And go back into your African roots. And I guarantee you'll see more than what meets the eye. But if you're stuck in that book all day, you will see things that are put there and put in place in this world that will confuse you if you're just looking at it from a one-dimensional perspective. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? We have to look at it from both. We have to look at the book. Then we have to look at the historical records. Then we have to look at what's relevant today within all those factual contents. Yeah, that's true. That's the, yeah. Yeah? So, so don't just look at it from one perspective. And we're not telling anyone to put the book down. Because we still teach and tie up to the book. Because a lot of, those sto a lot of the pure stories, if I start telling you about the stories in their purity, you'd be lost. And, yeah. and quite frankly, I hear some of these stories in their purity... And I'm lost sometimes until someone sits down and go, this is how that came about. That, they, have to, they have to walk me through it. I go, ah. Oh. And then I can go back and read it. Then it starts making sense. Mm -hmm. And that's someone sitting down with me. <laughs> and I've been doing years of research. Now, if you're just starting to research, how does that benefit you for me to throw that to you out on the airwave? Makes no sense. No. So we have to walk together so that we can reach the same point together. That's right. Definitely. You know, that's how I was taught, so that's how I'm teaching it. You well, know, I forgot by the method that was best for and, us. And that it method does was, work. And it does work. It helped to sieve out some of the things. But we just ask a question. Mm -hmm. Them say, we ask, who named God? Mm. So they said, um, God named himself. 
So who him tell him name? Like how we know say a name carry a certain things with it. That mm -hmm. if someone know your name and them call you for that split second that person might have um your attention fully. So if anybody know God name and you call God name and God answer, that means God command your command for a split second. And that's not possible. No. But then we try to decorate it and fancy it. Like you know, most of these um people end up um in a building trade where them do decoration most of the time so so i mean to, to the brother you know the, the topic that we've been doing for the past few weeks is did god create the devil yeah. now the reason why we do these topics right is to show you that not the, in the religious books yes you will find stories that ham or or mitzrah or mitzrahim is egypt which ties back to those do want, want, want to go live okay beer for scholar yes scholar you're live um, um, you'll have to call back. Call if you call back. Sorry, um, that uh, we don't know what happened there. So if you call back, you definitely can go live. You know, you know. No, call can go. Can, can go live. So I mean, yes, call are you live. Yes, I'm live. Yep. Can you turn uh, your radio down, please? Okay, good. Um, one thing I want to say to you. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Um, we have a, we have a talk from, from last week, but I'm going to forget that. What I want to do, I will congratulate you this morning. Okay. To see what you said about Brother Luke. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I congratulate you. Oh, thank you. you what did I say? For me. <laughs> the unity is working. Okay. The unity you're preaching is working. Mm -hmm. Somebody can take that from, he must turn the same congratulation to you. That means we are coming together. That's right. Yes? I'm asking one question I want to ask this morning. I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Brother Luke. Yeah. Who made the devil? All right. Okay. And you want us to answer it? Eh? You want us to answer it? No. Well, I'm going to ask you another way. Mm hmm If you know that I'm a pedophile... Yeah? <laughs> go on. <laughs> and you have a room to rent. <laughs> go on. <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah, what? Uh, you know that I'm a pizza file. Mm -hmm. You have a room to rent. Yeah. Would you rent me the room? No, sir. Then how do we find God and the devil inside the same place? All right. Now, now that's why this, this, this is why we're doing this topic, Did God Create the Devil? You know, but we got we we have to deal with that still. We answer it for you, okay? Well, I don't think God 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 um, make the devil man who created the devil. Well, on what we we are going we it's all come it's going all come together. It's going yeah. to all come together. It's Patience. It's going to come together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the right track, but we are going, it's going to come together. It's going to come together. Patience. All right. Yeah. 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 I will listen. All right. Yeah, like how that good and tie back yeah. in with the question right. we say who named God. Uh, who create God? A man create God in a well, man, well, no. in a well, you God. and him put attribute towards God and him tell you how God think from how God feel. Because well, man, sometimes when you listen to our brothers and sisters out there, especially from the re religious side, Christianity, yeah. I'm saying in particular, they my know brother. everything how God feel from how him think, from where he want to do, from where he want to do. Like with them give you a whole description of him. Yes, Some of the I times when they describe God, they have to wonder if they sit down with God and attack and God are really... Well, I'm God. Mm -hmm. I'm God. I'll prove it to you one day. <laughs> all right. All right. Hell. That's why I'm a God. Yeah. <laughs> yes, man. Don't worry. Right. Okay. We we'll talk soon. Yeah. Bye-bye. Right. Yeah. Um, what I was saying is, anyway, the topic is, did God create the devil? Yeah. And what we go through these finer points each week. To, sh to highlight certain key points because yes we've gone to the bible and we've shown this black lineage and this black passage where they're giving you european images right we've done this before so i don't know why the brother is saying that we're disagreeing because we've ag we will agree with that wholeheartedly that the key characters in the bible are from nubian stock or mm -hmm. african stock right that's not a problem for us to say yes that's true however there's things in the Bible as well, and there's views and concepts that are held within the religion of Christianity, the religion of, religion of Judaism and Islam, that is conflicting from what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. So if we stick, stick in strictly to the scriptures, there's a whole lot more to it than that. There's just black folks in there. 
That's right. Yeah, and this is what this is the point that we're we're highlighting that there's more to it than meets the eye, and unless you you read through, you can read through it and break it down, you'd be surprised what you see, because I can guarantee you I can show you Noapians in there. Yeah, we can show you um beans in there will stand over like say twenty foot, like what them say them look like the man look like grasshopper to these creatures. That's right. There is um beans in there with six toe, That's six right. finger. You have so many different species that take place in there. You have the... F yeah. So, but what, the, what difference does that make? Because yeah. we still know that this transliteration is still inaccurate because of the different changes. Every time they change from one language to the next, they change something around a little bit. That's right. So something is lost in translation, in essence. So the names we're now calling on are Greco-Roman names. Our Hebrew, our so-called Arabic. Our so-called, so that's right. And none of them ties back into our deities or our principles, which again is important. Yeah. Check out that lecture on the day, Saturday, 8th of October. Sounds, d tones, DNA molecules, and vibrational frequencies. That will open up your eyes to a different world. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Don't believe me? Check it out. Yeah. But anyway, we got a text message here from 018. Is a fool that looks one-dimensional... And is blind when even the devil is telling you to look three-dimensional movies now. Right. And even though 3D movies, remember, even though 3D movies, you're wasting your money. Because the brain will still see it in one way. That's right. And one way only. No matter how they, it tricks the brain, but then what, what? Is it damaging anything when it tricks the brain? It is. I'm kind of sending the brain a little bit of, what do you call it? it, it, it Confusion. Yeah, and shock. And sure. just like the, the HD, so if you're at home watching HD TV, what is it doing to you? You shouldn't be watching the images so sharp because of the high concentration of light. Mm -hmm. Go check it out. Do the research on HD TV. Why are the images so sharp? Does it affect you then? And there's conditions that it affects you in more than others. What does that mean? If you want to know more, Saturday the 8th of October. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's so much. So is that like when they um, give you one to say this image might contain, you know, bright images they may be? Well, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people with like, that will suffer from epilepsy, they, 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 they give them a lot of, um, if you want to know a bit more, you want to find out research um, tr triggers or cues to epilepsy. You know, you'll see a lot, a lot of information would, will actually start tying up with that. But it goes more than just epilepsy. Yeah. There's more to it than just that. That's just a part of it. Yeah. Anyway, so I mean, I can't remember where we left off last week. Um, you know. Yeah. I, I, I can't remember where we left off last week. But you know, one of the things that we were touching on when, when we were talking, we were saying when we we're saying based on all the, in, the information and day, we were saying basically according to the Bible, God's a killer. Yep, according I mean, to the Bible. According like, oh, to the Bible. The topic seems like it um rile some people a little bit where we said did God create the devil? And when we were going through this topic and going through the information pertaining to it, we're coming from the perspective of the Bible at most of the That's time. That's right. And most of these quotes you can find inside of the Bible. Now the question we ask, are we gonna agree that the Bible is the word of God? And if it is the word of God, is it what named the impregnable or uh, did man crept in with their own interpretation, interpretation inside of the Bible? Did God made this mistake or was it man? Are we going to say it's... No, ask that again because a lot of people don't... A lot of people wouldn't have got that. Is it the word of God? Mm -hmm. Is it man's word? Because if it's the word of God, it should be no fault. That's right. No mistake. And if there's faults and mistakes... Does God make mistakes? Is it man's word that man start tamper with it? If man tamper with it, it's no longer the word of God. That's right, because it change. You know. So what is this book that your people are living living by and basing their whole life on solely this book? Because evidentially, in the world at large, when you walk down the street every day, you don't see no evidence of it. Because people say, oh, things happen every day and it's like a miracle. But there's, the things happen every day to people that don't believe in the Christian God. Yeah, is it so? How is it a miracle to them? <laughs> That's a good question. You know, because there's people out there that they, they, they achieve greatness, 
and they don't they don't get up and say thank god they get up and say yeah i did it that's right so you know what when i mean get up and say, yeah, I did yeah, yeah i did it you know so the question this these are the questions that we have to start asking ourselves you know what we're gonna we're gonna jump into it you know because yeah. mm. so all right then I ask you a question. Are there any stories of human sacrifice in the so-called holy book? <laughs> well, we, I mean, I don't... We don't say so-called. We don't have tried to be insultive because... No. Because remember, when you say holy, I mean, it means pure and undiluted. Undiluted, yeah. So we have to say... And tampered so, with. So we have to, just like we say so-called black, because I've never seen a black man in my life. Because if you look at your skin, your skin's not black. No matter how dark you is, you're just dark brown. That's right. So we say so-called black... And we say so-called holy. Mm -hmm. Because there's things in there that's unholy. So how is it called holy? That's right. You have um, people in there where women are tell one, make we eat for our son today. And we eat mine. And the Bible says she did eat. You have people in there commit all sorts of abomination. You have people in there do things with a, we to say, morality. They might touch right. on. You have child sacrifice. This is in the Bible. I didn't write it. This was written before I was even born. That's right. So this was in there. So you can't come along and say it's me. I look for fine old. We just read the Bible and we say all of this in there. It says is zero one eight says Ezekiel thirty nine seventeen. I've never read it. So Who it? Get it then. Yeah, we, we're going to we're going to look at Ezekiel thirty nine seventeen zero one eight. Um, so we're going to jump into it. So basically, the answer there is yes. And if you go into the Quran itself as well, because we're dealing with the three religious books here, we're not dealing with just one. In the Quran 6, 137, the pagans slaughtered their own children to cause confusion in their religion. And in this same verse it says, If Allah had willed, they would have done so. But leave alone them and their inventions. So let me get it straight, right? Mm -hmm. According to this verse, in, in verse 6, 137, you are, tell, um, are you telling me that Allah wanted this to happen because he could have easily willed it not to happen, right? According to how they say, view Allah. Couldn't Allah send his angels whose, I mean, whose command is but a single act, like the twinkling of an eye, as mentioned in Quran 54:50, Or was Allah jealous? Quran 40, 65 to 66, or Exodus 25? Go check it out. Yeah, he's right there in Exodus 25 with God being jealous, right? No, sir? Yeah, yeah, like uh, so. this tie back in with what we are saying, we have to wonder are these attributes, mm -hmm. are these attributes of God, are these attributes of man. That's right. So because the pagans gave him a share of the cattle and their partner's idols a share, and Allah did not receive the share of the partner's idols, remember, Allah doesn't like partners. Quran 17, 1, 1, 1. You know, so we are going through the three religions one time. We're not dealing with just Christians. We are dealing with everybody this <laughs> from now on. God, I don't want them to be Christians and feel so we are picked on them all the time. You know what I say? So, we're going to show it in all of the books them at one time. This is one we're going to read out for um, the person. Yeah, Exodus is, 39 um, 17. Yeah? No, Ezekiel 39 Ezekiel 39 17. 17. 17. Sorry, and my it bad. Say, and thou, son of man, thus say the Lord God, speak unto every feathered fowl and every beast of the field. Assemble yourself and come to. Gather yourself on every side of my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mount of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Uh, this is what the scripture says. So we eat, don't say eat, that. eat flesh and what? Ye may eat flesh, uh, eat flesh and, and drink, drink blood. blood. Ye, eat, ye shall eat flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princess. So, uh, so, 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 this is where they, get, they eat flesh and drink blood with Jesus, then. Yeah. Yeah. Like what, this are the Lord, you know. I speak and I'm and, and we'll eat flesh and, and drink blood. Eat flesh and drink blood. I fool out that. That's a good question. Like we have to ask the question again. Who's, who's Lord is like that? Like when they go back to Genesis chapter three and go back in a Genesis and them start to roast the sweet paper. God, they like the smell of it, don't it? So we have to wonder which God, this God, no, will like the smell. But this a flesh sound like human flesh when he say eat flesh and drink blood. Yeah, like when he say I'm going to make them eat the, the flesh of the princesses it, and drink the blood of the princesses. You yeah, understand what I say? Is there some you know, allegorical meaning as them? Well, like, you know, fancy words. Fancy word. Uh, uh, allegory. Make a play, uh, yeah. yeah. They're like for doing all of them fancy words. Oh, God didn't mean this. He mean that. <laughs> No, if you're a literal reader, it's a eat flesh. So, it says somebody never know the little part where it says God yeah. doesn't mean that. They say, they say, they might go chop you up and eat you. Yeah, so if you <laughs> never mean this, 
Him should have put where mean then. Mm. Nobody <laughs> put where no mean. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, God, God never knows. I'm not confused people with that. Then why? You don't look so. All the people them know. Me uh, think me God know. know. Like oh, God must have sit down. You know, say sometimes you go back in the Bible. When you go back to um, Jeremiah chapter four, verse twenty three to twenty eight, and you read that particular chapter there, and God said, "I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make an end to the earth and the wall of the city then broke down." What God saying at that? And I shall not repent. From it because mm. him are that. But when you go back to Genesis and God create man from the sixth day, God repent this so. But in a Jeremiah chapter four, him say now nah, repent. Mm. If I'm not buying it, never read. So so I, I be I be a double talk. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, him him double standard. Him Which one is it? Him, 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 if you want to take part in the show, you want you got want to call in and go live. The landline number is 0208 904 Five six nine two. Remember, if you feel we're not saying something that that's right, you want to clear it up, you can go live. You know, we don't don't have to be nervous. We give people a fair chance to speak and get their point across, and we're not disrespectful to anyone. We just deal with the facts. And if you want to present your facts, you know, which you feel that will go against what we're saying, or you want to agree, landline number o two o eight nine o four five six nine two. I'll give it one more time o two o eight nine o four five six nine two. Text line if you just want to text a question in or text a point in. 07950-787-581. 07950-787-581. It's Omega. You know, the breaking the spell show. But, mm, one of the things that I want to go to whilst you're looking for that, you know what I mean? But not only does human sacrifice occur in the Quran, but it's also mentioned in the Bible, as you can see. Yeah? So if you open up your Bible to the books of Jeremiah 19.5, it says that, they have built also high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire or ash for burnt offerings, Allah, unto Baal. Go check it out. This yeah? is the one where I just go to it quick. It said, I have spoken it, I have purposed it, and will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. So, one minute in a Jeremiah chapter 4, verse... Um, um, 24, 28. This is what the Lord said. He shall not repent. But then mm -hmm. in Genesis, he said he repented when he created man. So we want mm -hmm. to know what happened if God sit down and have um, mood swings. The, the no mood thing you have? Unless it's the same one all the time. It, it, it might sound a bit, you know, when we say mood swing, people might look upon it and I say we are trying to be um, the little, the little it are. Uh, wait, name there. But we are dealing with the reality of what happened to no, us today. We have mood swings at times. We're throwing things out there. It's either it wasn't the same person. One said him now nah, repent, the other saying repent. Yeah. So either it wasn't the same person or it's someone throwing mood swings. Yeah, or uh, this is a uh, God where they're at a lower level. Or uh, him, him can't keep straight what he have in mind. Must have taken too much sugar. <laughs> like what sugar give mood swings so it does too much. it does so if you take too much sweet or a certain thing it give a mood swings that's so most definitely right it must have a sweet tooth as that's well because you know that it's the sugar that breaks down and turns into the alcohol that's whether right it, whether in or out of the body so if you drink the alcohol straight you get mood swings right mm -hmm. or if you take the sugar it go and break down and give mood swings anyway but they call it a sugar rush or a sugar crash yeah so that's what it says. So sometimes that's why we question the Bible in other sense of overstand if it's the most high God where them attack, them would answer the God of the boundless universe. Or is it a different God or is it a man? Well, it's a good question, you know, straight out there. The most high God. Go we, you know, we're going to need a question on the hour because for the, to give these tickets for Culture Fest this week. You know, we threw out the one last week, but I don't, by the, by the sounds of things, I don't think anyone's going to get that one, you know, because we've had people coming into the shop. Mm -hmm. And they knew a lot, but they still couldn't put their finger upon the final part of the answer. So it's probably too hard. So we're going to throw out a different question this week Four for the two question. tickets. You know, so think of a question in the next five minutes we can throw out there. You know what I mean? But again, jumping back into the information, if you also look in Second Kings 30, um, 3, 27, um, the Moabite king loses the battle against um, Isra the Israelites. So he offers his eldest, his eldest son as a burnt offering. You know, your preacher doesn't teach you the story, does he? And when I said the Israelites, I'm talking about the, what everyone basing the, the, the whole story off. So why more get him to burn? What, more eat him? You know? So, anyway. Yeah, you know, them go 
wrong with that too as well. Second man. Kings three twenty seven. Go look at it. Don't believe me. Check it out yourself. Second Kings three twenty seven. Um, the word for burnt, burnt offering in Hebrew or Aramaic, as they say, is Ola. O l a w. Ola. You know, Ola, meaning burnt offering sacrifice. And this same word is used in Genesis 22, 8, when Abram was ready to offer his son Isaac or Ishmael or Yishak, depending whichever religion you come from, the triad of names, as a human sacrifice to God. The Lord himself condones human sacrifice. Judges 11, 30 to 40. Go read it for yourself. All right, so let me ask you a question mm. since that the Bible said, does God condone and accept human sacrifice? Well, the simple answer there is yes. Because if you look up in the book of Judges 11, 30 to 40, um, Jephthah made a vow to the Lord that if he helps him defeat his enemy, the children of Ammon, then he would offer the first person to meet him upon his return as a burnt offering. And the Aramic um, Hebrew word used again is Ola, meaning burnt offering burnt sacrifice so you can use your concordance bible and check these things out which is the same word used back in genesis 22 7 when abraham attempts to sacrifice his son isaac yeah so make note at this point in judges 11 31 jephthah offers a burnt offering human sacrifice after the spirit or the ruach of the lord yahweh came upon him in judges 11 29 make note Again, at this point that the word, that the wrong English word is used, you know, when you, when you go and you check it in Judges 11.31 for the Aramic Hebrew word, ruach, the correct English word for ruach would be soul. So they said the spirit, but it should really be the soul. Yeah, so the Aramic Hebrew word for spirit is nafesh. Yeah, so now you start seeing mistranslations. Is that purposeful or intentional or accidental? Right? But That's anyway. A good question. Now the Lord obviously agreed because he delivers Jephthah his enemy, the Ammonites, in Judges eleven thirty two. And Jephthah couldn't go back on his words, Judges eleven thirty five. When he came home, who was who would be the first person to meet you now? Think about it logically now. You yeah, come from war. Yeah. Uh, who's going to be glad to see you? The per your family. All right. Anyway, when he came home, his daughter was the first to meet him. Judges 11.34. His daughter bewailed her innocence. her innocence for two months. And she was offered as a burnt offering to the Lord himself. Don't believe me. Go read it, people. Go read it yourself. Think about this now because it doesn't make any sense to me. If God stopped Abram from sacrificing his son Isaac, then he could have stopped Jephthah from sacrificing his only daughter. You know? When you Reverend William Piercy, an yeah. historian such as Kimchi Ki, um, and Koenig and Eldershime, try to take this try to take the allegorical mystical path and says that the girl was not sacrificed but was only denied the right to marry no you know the bible the bible so anybody who's thinking allegorically out there yeah don't bother with it yeah. the bible says that she was sacrificed so if the bible says she was sacrificed it means she was sacrificed. Well, we just mention Alacor before we come up. <laughs> before, you know. Yeah, that's, that's, so, that's a spook, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So she was burnt as a burnt offering to Yahweh. Some Christians claim, had the Lord believed that Jephthah intended human sacrifice, he would have handed the Israelites a defeat instead of victory. Despite your assumptions, for those who think that, this is an actual human sacrifice occurring in your Bible, whether you want to accept it, the reality of it, or not. Yeah? It's there. You can go read it yourself. So what's that word again? Allegorize it? Allegory. Uh, allegory. It's like, Alleg that's, that's like a get out of jail kind of thing, isn't it? Huh? It is. Let me not tell you, them, <laughs> the, 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 the people that we are dealing with, yeah. them come up with neat, fancy words and neat, fancy explanations. 
just to go around the fox sometime. Like how we get a bit, um, you know what you say, thing was a bit different compared to last time because mm. the sort of information I got there where some people have said about the research is it good to see him at the research. Uh -huh. That make it much better. At least we know say, we're doing something right. Most definitely. Most definitely. Let's look at Let's look at this now. Text message from 314. Where does the word testament come from? All right. 314. Three, three, may I have an answer, but I'm not too sure. I'll double check it before I give it to you. Yeah? Because I can't, half my, half my head, I can't remember the fullness of the answer. So we, I'm going, we're going to come back to it. We're just going to double check a few points. You know, because there's a lot of different breakdowns of it. You know, testament, because you have the First Testament, Second Testament, and Third Testament. The First Testament is your Torah or your Old Testament, as they call it, the Old Testament. You have the Second Testament or your New Testament. And you have the Third Testament, which is what they call the Kohan, right? Because it's all one long story. Now, with the Testament, you hear that name in there that you will hear, you know, for those who know. The Ayman, the Imam, where they got that word. We brought this down a few months back, you know. You got the Ayman, the Imam, where you get that Amun or Amun or Amun from. So, you know, that is part of the, 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 the principle. So, with, 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 with that, in terms of where they got the word testament from, in terms of if you're talking about Europeans, you know, we know what the word phon um, phonetically breaks down to and where it comes from when you're talking about tying back in to Amon, you know, the hidden one. But in terms of um, the European breakdown, I don't, uh, um, I would have to come back to you on that. Yeah, um, can't remember it clearly, and I don't really want to say it. And yeah. make up the, I'll just catch my thoughts on it and then try to clear it up. I'll yeah. have a look at it as well. So we'll come back to you on that. We understand testament the way them use it today. Mm -hmm. That when they go to church, you see the people them say them testify. I remember a testament where he might use it in a sense where um, he might talk where it happened to him. And it's like a confession according to them. But then we're going to find the word. Make sure we hear the correct answer to it. You know, we want to pick up all the listeners on the net, all those listening in the Caribbean, all those listening in Europe, all those listening in the UK, you know, uh, and all those listening in the States. You know, we want to big up everybody online, you know, London listeners as well listening online, you know, Brighouse, Camlington, Burke, Oxford, Coventry, Chislehurst, Hamburg, Milton Bravo. Keynes, Nottingham, Wolverhampton, Peterborough. We want to big up all of the listeners <laughs> listening all around. We want to say... You know, you know, big up yourself, keep listening. It's a breaking the spell show, you know how we do it. Um, if we go to the book of Ezekiel 23, 36 to 39, um, Ahola and Aholiba caused their sons to be burnt in fire as a human sacrifice to their idols. In Psalms 106, 37, they sacrificed their son and their daughters unto devils. And the Aramic Hebrew word used for devils in this quote is the word Shadim. You know, you know, again... That Shad, you see that Shad, where people say El Shaddai and think it's a good thing. That Shad, that should, you know, that Shadim, because the Eem on it just pluralizes it. See that Shad and the Eem. Remember, we said Elo and Eem. Elo singular, Elohim plural. Shad, demon, Eem, Shadim, demons. You start seeing it now. So when you say El Shaddai, what are you saying? You're calling on demon, the mighty demon. You're not calling on God. When you say El Shaddai, go check the language out, you'll see it yourself. God doesn't condone the pagan human sacrifice to their idols. However, he condones it for himself. Go check that out. So, so for remember, he is a jealous God and you shall not worship no other God but him alone. You know, as they say, Wadahu la sharika lahu. He is alone and has no partners. You know, so all throughout the scriptures, God also asks for animal sacrifices. So not just human, animal sacrifices also. So he's, he not only likes the burnt smell of humans, but he likes the sweet savor of animals also. Animals are constantly being used every day in animal sacrifices just to satisfy some bloodthirsty God, it seems. Or, I mean, Definitely. you know, we have to, uh, it's a question as well. Is that true? 
or is it a lie? According to the Bible it is. So what kind of God do you worship that needs to smell the sweet savor of burnt flesh? You know? And it is well pleasing to him. Philippians 4.18 Why would you have to burn his own creation to say, yeah, it smells good? He like barbecue. That don't, that don't sound right, but hey. <laughs> Why is it so hard for you know for people to see that the God of the universe would not need these types of things? Think about it, you know. The God that we're talking about the Bi in the Bible can't be the God of the universe. No. Because the God of the universe wouldn't need these type of things. But we're talking about the God of the Bible, the God of the Quran, the God of the Torah or the Old Testament. This is the God we're talking about. But it can't be the God of the universe then. So somebody I try to get you to worship the wrong God. Overstand I'm saying I'm using the word God loosely. He could create the smell instead of killing some animals, couldn't he? Who, would, who were obviously put here on the planet Earth for a reason. And that reason is the chain of life. So something fishy going on there. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's get back to that word, um, testament. You mm. know, the... Semitic, some will call it um, Akdul Jadid. Uh -huh. And when they say testament, it means uh, that you, have, you, you have testify of something that was already there, mm -hmm. so you can verify it. That's why you come up with um, something like a New Testament, mm -hmm. because it was already there. So you can't testify of something that was not there. Right. You have to go back. That's mm -hmm. why they come up with a New Testament, because they couldn't testify of the Old Testament mm -hmm. and things that was already happened. Mm -hmm. And then them write about it. Okay, so that's why the first testament and the second and the, 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 the first testament is the second testament is a repeat, or the new testament is a repeat of the old testament. Yeah. Because you're testifying on things that happened already. Yeah. So you can't. That's how them use the word testament. Or you call it Abdul Jadid. Okay. And likewise with the Quran as well. For those who don't know, you know where Jesus was talking about after him will come another and Ahmed. Yeah, you know, it's and about a next shall come. Him say a next comforter. And it's shall the word come the word time. used there is Ahmed. Yeah, Ahmed. The word for comforter in the New Testament, go check it out, is Ahmed. What do the Muslims call Muhammad? Mm-hmm. Ahmed. Yeah, because he says someone is going to come and they are going to testify at him. If you go back and look at the, um, the Quran, you see uh, Muhammad testify at Jesus. Because